What is up? Remember I said I need to make a power supply. High voltage, about 300 volts DC, and like about 15 to 17 volts DC for control voltage, and then you got your zero to five volts speed. Speed is going out, and then these other two wires is the 17 volt feed. I have a little 12 volt in toroid transformer with a MOSFET right here, and I'm testing to see if the MOSFET's even gonna get hot. It is warm, a little bit warm. I might have to fine tune the uh, speed. I'm just using my test pulse width modulator there, but. The first attempt, I just took one of these uh, toroids, which I already had made up before, and then just going through a diode and into the capacitor here, and it stepped it up to exactly pretty much 17 volts, 17.68 volts. So it's going green to red, which I have just, fuck. This plug is the uh, blower motor. Uh, and I believe all the like outdoor fan motors and stuff of this same nature all work the same. Between uh, three, which is ground, and one, which is 300 volts. And then between three and four, you put about 15 volts, 17 volts there, just exactly what it says. And between uh, three and five, it's your signal in. 0 to 5 volts, 5 volts maxing it out, which it is, you can hear it. It doesn't need that much power, per se, it's mostly the voltage. So I have a cheap-ass IRF 510 on here. I'm probably saturating this a little bit. It's actually putting out heat. It's not burning my finger, but it's getting there. It's probably about 125 degrees, 120, 125, maybe close to 130. When it starts to get irritating, it's about 130. So I think it's just still under that a little bit. With a heat sink, it wouldn't even be any issue right there. Getting a little bit of interference on the screen just because everything's on the same power supply, but it says a uh, 1.5% duty cycle is what I'm sending into the optical isolator. And it's output is switching the MOSFET. Some of these MOSFETs, 5 volts gate voltage, sometimes is almost not enough. But I think this one's going to be okay. Okay, I've had it run for a few minutes. I even went inside for a few minutes. I'm running it at uh, 500 hertz. 1.16, pretty much 1.2 duty cycle. Got 16 volts. MOSFET with no heat sink on it is cooler now than it was. It's just warm. I'd say like 120. 120 degree MOSFET with no heat sink on? Come on. I don't even think it's gonna need a heat sink if uh, it can sustain that. All right, well, one step forward, two steps back with that. So uh, I took the wires, hooked it up, disconnected it from the power supply. As you see, hooking up to this 12 volt battery, it works. 12 volts is going in to my re regulator to run my 5 volt microprocessor and everything and then uh, in the, in the, the voltage that goes out to the uh, speed reference and then uh, 12 volts goes over to this so the MOSFET could pulse that toroid and yeah and the MOSFET's not even really barely starting to feel get warm at all so it's not that much current works but as soon as I plug that thing into the 12 volts coming out of the VRP, it just drops the voltage. And actually, it's not 12 volts, it's like 10 volts. It's the same as the voltage that, that seems to be going to the motor right here, 10 volts. And uh, probably the same power supply feeding them both. It's not that robust. I guess it doesn't take so much to run those thermostats. But yeah. I don't know where else to dare tap it on any power in there, so I'm going to have to go back to another plan now. That was a wasted effort, making that all those successful step up toroid power supply. Back to something that I should have checked. It was just a little bit of a bitch to take this circuit board out and apart, so I didn't. But lo and behold, this is, you know, this power supply here. It's got AC power coming in, and you got a one leg here, and then 
think uh, that's and the one leg over here this is your S your communication one so you got here and here and if you're looking in here you got the fuse you got a resistor it probably charges up a little capacitor until it gets to a certain capacitor and the relay closes at least that's how a lot of uh, these kind of power supplies work so it doesn't have that inrush current when the capacitor is at zero it starts to charge the capacitor up and then the re relay closes and charges it the rest of the way goes right through the bridge rectifier there into the capacitor just that capacitor for the blower motor so you know the blower motor doesn't take all that much it's 450 volt rated capacitor and it does have a transformer over here but i am looks like it's after the high voltage and this is what's you know stepping down to the secondary vo lower voltages and then you got a 7805 here probably for some microprocessor and some other stuff or, and probably all the sensors and everything there's a little piezo beeper there but uh so what I just did here, so I've been taking my 110, step it up to 230, running line one, line two to power this up, use it with the remote control and everything. So now what I've done just to test that theory is I have the AC power coming out of my transformer and then here's a rectifier and then I'm sending DC in to here. So I'm rectifying the DC to go in there. If there was a transformer, step-down transformer that had AC power to the primary winding, well, that primary winding becomes like a dead short to DC, you know, and you would pop something. So, but when I do turn on the power, there's a beep. That's a good sign. That lit up. Oops. Yeah. You got the fan hooked back up into it, except... And see if it runs. Now it ran earlier when I had AC going back into it. I, oh, this does have a shit long delay. Look, there it goes. Kind of freaks out. So, okay. So it looks like I'm going to put this back together and use this circuit board because as the power supply. Um, it can run on 230 volts AC or it can run on, you know, about 300 volts DC, you know, technically. So uh, when I run the power outside, I'll probably just, you know, tie it to my to my battery pack. Actually, that'll be connected to that. I won't even, you know, need any of that other stuff. You know, just be strictly DC, probably power and S, probably be strictly DC power and everything, and I'll just charge the battery off of solar. So that's probably what's going to happen. So I'm just looking at the speed reference. So again, I will have to interface something to put pulses into this FMC board. When that blower is running, it needs to know that the blower is mo running. So hopefully it's not like uh, too dependent on what the frequency is exactly, all the, other than just knowing that the motor is running. So it's pretty much just a fan proving switch, I hope. and doesn't do any other real speed control feedback. If that's the case, then I should be able to, uh, might even be able to just take uh, the, the signal out of this, if it's enough, and just go into optical isolator and then make a, take the output of that optical isolator, take its own power and switch it right back into itself to make the pulses over there. Keep that happy. Damn fucking crickets! As bad as a Goodman unit. I hate crickets. Anyway... I did take this uh, laptop charger apart, to, uh, and it works the same way. Rectifier, goes to DC capacitor, and then it has a switching mode to drop it down to 19 volts. The reason I do it that way is because these things take anywhere from 100 to 240 volts AC, so you can use it in America, Europe, whatever. So the easiest way to do that is they just take that power right to DC. It doesn't matter if the DC is 170 volts, which is what it would be at 110, or like 330, which is what it would be full rectified, you know, for a 240 volt source. And then it steps it down from there. So you could just inject DC right to that first capacitor where the rectified AC was, and it'll work. So also I was taking the, the DC out from it, and I had this hooked up to this blower. It was an idea just for testing and yeah it, it I powered up the blower and the uh, 19 volts I looped back in here into the in the, the power for the 19 volts and then I put in my speed signal in it and the blower ran the 
Buffalo Rams, and I was getting thinking about it. I was like, fuck, now that this is getting pokey and everything, I better just check this board. Yeah, and you know what? Sure enough, it's uh, strictly just, uh, there is no AC power running in the circuit board. It just goes straight to the, to the you know, relay right to the rectifier. And then it just, uh, that's high voltage there. And it's probably over 300 volts sitting in there. And then you just have, uh, you know, the secondary circuits. So it's making the uh, control voltage for my motor. And it's also at this point just sending the speed, you know, and I might just, I don't know, I'll have to decide. Do I want to use the remote and everything in here? Maybe I could just to turn on the fan and change the speeds. But I don't know. I think I'm probably still going to use my adapter circuit and just use this thing just to power the uh, the motor, high voltage and secondary voltage, and then I have the uh, speed reference probably come from the VRP, especially since I did all the work to make this uh, controller here. <laughs> Might even have to put it inside here, actually. Maybe. Could even clip the leads in there. Who knows? I don't know what I'm going to do. But, oh well, so that's pretty much the stage I'm at with this project. That I finished, probably have to fine tune this and put it back together and then uh, go back to interfacing the two devices. And once I have that kind of worked out, then I'll be almost ready to put this together. And yeah, make sure you like and subscribe share everything eventually you know you'll get to see me let the smoke out <laughs> if that's uh will make you want to watch my videos late